Hi there, this is Mick Reynolds, Senior ISD Application Engineer with Imagina Technologies, here to present how to size ponds in the Storm and Sanitary Analysis Program. There is a common misconception that the Storm and Sanitary Analysis Program, or SSA for short, does not calculate the required storage volume for a detention pond. Today I'm going to show you the steps required to perform this calculation. First we start with, start out with the proposed conditions model and we're going to assume at junction 23 we'd like to place a detention pond. The first step is to check our analysis options and our storm selection and make sure that we run the storm and create a solution file for the 100 year storm event. It's also important to specify the output file name otherwise when you go to run the analysis it will fail After we're done, and we don't need to allow, load the output for the 100 year storm because we're not going to be evaluating it here, we're going to select OK and we're going to run our analysis. After the analysis is done, we can shut down the proposed conditions model. Once we're done running the proposed conditions, we're going to do the same thing for, with the existing conditions model at the same junction. So we're going to come up to our analysis options Again, we'll assign multiple storms, but in this case we're going to run the 100 year storm. We're also going to specify the output file name. And lastly, this time we are going to go ahead and we are going to load the output file for this 100 year storm. We're going to select OK and we'll go ahead and perform our analysis. Now that we're done performing our analysis, we're going to review the results for our existing conditions 100 year storm event. So we'll come down and we are going to activate our time series plot and we're going to find our node and we'll find the total inflow for our junction number 23. You'll see we can use our scrolling and our panning button to center our hydroflow curve for this particular storm. You can also see below in the readout that tells us the total maximum inflow f at this junction for the 100 year event is 24.71 cubic feet per second. Our next step is to come up to our time series plot and open the solution file for our post development and again when it loads the time series plot we'll come over again to the same node total inflow at junction number 23 and we'll superimpose that hydrograph on top of the existing conditions hydro hydrograph. You'll notice once you do this that it also places the total maximum inflow for the proposed conditions at 32.27 cubic feet per second. When we size ponds, one of the most important things to understand is that we want to reduce the flow from our proposed conditions back down to our original conditions so what we can do now is we can come over to our maximum flow and tell it that we want a maximum flow of 24.71 for this particular design. So we'll come in and put 24 and I'll just use a 24 exactly so it'll be a little bit more conservative. And we'll go ahead and we'll let it run the evaluation. You can see it running over here on the left hand side. And when it's done it will report back the area between the two curves at the peak of the cycle and also reports back the detention storage volume of 9,298.23 cubic feet for the storage of this pond. In addition to it giving us the volume that we need to design for the detention pond in our proposed design, we also have a graph that we can include in our design documentation to submit to the approval agency. Using the SSA to perform this calculation along with the stage storage tool in Civil 3D and being able to import the results from that stage storage curve into the SSA will expedite the process of sizing our ponds for our drainage report. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video tech tip on how to size ponds in the storm and sanitary analysis. For more information on our Autodesk authorized training, visit imagineit.com forward slash training or call 1-800-356-9050